kind of way he lives. a couple of Sundays being here. Uh, we didn't have Sunday school uh, Easter Sunday and I know you have probably heard uh, the message uh, several times through the years and uh, last week we didn't have a lesson so I'm going to try to do parts of three lessons today and uh, I have my Bible that you all have looked at and made fun of, but I love this Bible. And I sit with someone in church, Miss Janelle Permenter, that thinks, thinks uh, I need a new Bible. And uh, it's all to pieces, as you can tell, but this is my study Bible. And I have written down every time... Uh, our pastor preaches. Brother Danny, I've got him written down as as uh, preaching in 18 and in the year 13 and the year 15. And, and I write down uh, uh, who preaches on that, that day and the things they have to say. And so this is my study Bible. But Ms. Ms. Permenter, He's always trying to give me a piece of paper and pencil to write in. And I said, no, I want to write in my, my study Bible. Now I have my good Bible uh, here. Uh, it's really Calvin's Bible. And I've talked to you about this Bible before, that this is the Bible that was given to Calvin. He was one of 10 children and none of them were Christians. And the little next door neighbor gave him this Bible for, uh, in 1973, I believe it was, uh, when he graduated from, no, it was in 19, it was 73 years ago. Uh, and uh, she knew that he was graduating from high school. And she gave him this Bible and it, it went all the way to Korea uh, it, during his service and I had it rebound for him and uh, so it's a, a special meaningful Bible to me in fact I even have have Calvin's picture when he was in the in Korea and it was in this Bible and so it has a special meaning for me and I'll be reading a, a scripture out of it in, in a few minutes uh, as we sh started back two or three weeks ago, we talked about the crucifixion. And we know that it was a, a horrible, horrible death for Jesus. And Jesus knew that it was going to be a time for him to suffer and die. And after he ate the Passover meal with his disciples, he went in to pray and even one of his disciples Judas uh, betrayed Jesus and and told the temple police where the where Jesus was and we know the story that Jesus died on the cross 
to save us from from our sins. And uh, you've heard the story many times. And then I played the two songs that I wanted you to hear about the uh, resurrection. Uh, the songs He Lives and Because He Lives. And we sing those songs today, not only at Easter time, but we sing them all during the year. We know that Jesus, Jesus uh, was resurrected. Uh, he died on the cross, we know, uh, to pay for the punishment of our sins, but God raised him back to life. And it is true that Jesus' uh, tomb was temple, was empty, but we found out that Jesus was alive. And he talked to them. He told the women that went down to prepare his body and to back then you know they didn't have coffins and all they had uh, just a dugout uh, cave type uh, grave and they went down and a huge stone was was there and it had been rolled back and they they were very very surprised uh, because they didn't know what, what had happened. And uh, we found out that Jesus was alive and he was uh, resurrected. Uh, he came back for only 40 days. And during those 40 days, this was the time that that he gave his great commission. Now we know a, a commission is kind of an instruction, uh, a, a duty given. Uh, it tells the people what to do, and we call it the Great Commission. And I'm going to read it out of uh, Calvin's Bible. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always and even unto the end of the world. Now, uh, Karen and Jerry, you all probably grew up learning that song, and, and uh, I learned it, probably heard of it in the beginners and in uh, Sunday school, and we had training union, and uh, Karen was probably in GAs and YWAs, and this was kind of our theme of all of these different organizations. And, and I came to this church when I was 18 months old, which was a year or two ago. Eighty some odd years ago. Uh, eight, about 85 years ago. And, uh, and I grew up in this church learning the Great Commission. And, and uh, went, I was here every time the doors were, were open and, uh, and learned about God's Word and about God's Great Commission. Then we moved away, and uh, I met Calvin, and we moved down to San Marcos and Dripping Springs, and and then we moved back 42 years ago. So I've been a member of this church for uh, years and years, and we are still teaching about the Great Commission. Um, we know that we need to tell others uh, when we have something good that happens to us we want to tell uh, our friends about what's happened well nothing is greater than telling others about uh, the Great Commission about that Jesus died on the cross 
and he died for our sins and <coughs> he was resurrected uh, and he was here 40 days and he told the, the disciples that he wanted them to go out and tell others uh, about uh, his work. Jesus even asked, do you have anything to eat? And he was, he was given uh, raw fish and he ate it. Then Jesus told the people, says, I told you everything written about me in the scriptures had to be fulfilled. I had to suffer and I had to die. I had to rise on the third day and we know all of this is written in, in our scriptures. All this had to happen so that God could forgive the sins of all who repent and believe in me. And when people re receive forgiveness through their belief in me, they will live forever in God, and will live forever with God in heaven. Uh, Jesus con continued to teach and he told the disciples, he said, to go out into the world and tell others about Jesus Christ. And we have one of the greatest secrets there is that, and we, try, we keep it as a secret. We don't tell others about Jesus like, like we should. Uh, the disciples were full of joy and they they obeyed Jesus and they started telling others about Jesus that he died on the cross he was resurrected and he came back to life and then he was here 40 days on earth and he went back uh, to be with God uh, Jesus was taken up into heaven as the disciples watched and two angels told the disciples Jesus will be back one day but do not just stand there waiting go and do what he told you to do and that was uh, the Great Commission uh, Jesus gave his followers a job to do and that was to tell others about him. And we are a follower of Jesus, and we keep the best known secret sometimes to ourselves and not tell others about, about Jesus. Uh, this boy named Bob said, whom, whom do I tell about Jesus? He said, I don't know very many people. And Mr. Sam said, you know more people than you realize. Said, you can tell the people that you see every day. And Bob replied, like, like whom? And he said, well, like the people that, that you live with. And, and uh, Bob said, you mean the other guys, like the house managers and the people that come in and care for us in our group homes? And Mr. Sam said, yes. And Bob said, well, uh, I think I can do that and who else can I tell so we know that we can we don't have to go down the grocery store aisles and just shout that we love Jesus but I think the way we live tells people that we love Jesus Jesus gave his followers a job to do go and tell others and tell about him and we are Jesus's followers uh, then I'm going to hit just a little bit on, on the lesson uh, about Pentecost now Pentecost is uh, a celebration of, of the descent of the Holy Spirit uh, the Holy Spirit is a gift from God. Sometimes it's, you feel the Holy Spirit. It's hard, a little hard to explain, but uh, sometimes 
you just, a song may hit you and you feel that God is with you. You feel the Holy Spirit. Uh, after Jesus had been re resurrected for 40 days, he talked with his disciples and others. And they knew that Jesus was alive and that, that he was real and that he was ready to go back to heaven. And he told his disciples that what, what they needed to do next. He said, stay here in Jerusalem for, for now. God is going to send the Holy Spirit to you. And the Holy Spirit will give you the power to do what, what I say. Uh, the Holy Spirit comforts us. It guides us and it tells us what we need to do and tells others about me. When the Holy Spirit comes, tell about me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other parts of the earth. So a few days later, many people were in Jerusalem for a festival, and the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly they heard this roaring, roaring wind God sent the Holy Spirit. The Spirit filled each, Holy Spirit filled each disciple. And the, the Spirit helped the disciples to speak in different languages. Said others, said many of them were just speaking different languages. And they didn't understand how this could happen. Peter stepped forward and he explained, God has given us his spirit. He wants us to tell you about his son, Jesus. God sent Jesus to earth. Jesus did many, many miracles. You saw them. Then Jesus was nailed to the cross and then God planned for that to happen. And then Jesus died as a sacrifice for your sins. But then God resurrected Jesus. Jesus defeated sin and death, and he is alive and real. We have seen him. He has returned to heaven to be with God, but he sent his Holy Spirit so that we can tell you about him. Believe in Jesus, repent of your sins, be baptized as Jesus' followers. He will forgive your sins and he will send the Holy Spirit to you too. This is Jesus' promise to everyone who believes in him. Years ago, back when I was in Dripping Springs, and I was going back and forth to San Marcos trying to get my degree. And I was older, I was 30, 40 years old, and I was with a young, young boy. We were driving back and forth to school. And we had a very near accident. Uh, we were coming, he was driving faster than he should, like most teenage boys. And he, we came down this long hill to a bridge. And right in the middle of the bridge was a car. And I knew right then there was going to be a very bad accident. In fact, I knew that there was just no way we could get past that, that car on that bridge. And I think the Holy Spirit just fell over me because I could actually hear the angel singing. And it was, uh, it's, it's even hard to talk about, but it was the most beautiful music I have ever heard. And I felt like right then I was going to see Jesus and be with Jesus. I felt like my life would be ended. And uh, because I, the Holy Spirit just came upon me and I could hear all these beautiful angels 
singing, but we looked around, we got over the bridge, we never saw the car again. We, it was a, it was an experience I, I will never forget. And I think back, when I think of the Holy Spirit, that's, that's what I've came to me is the Holy Spirit came upon me and I knew right then where I would be when I pass away that I've given my heart to, to Jesus Christ. I was baptized here and, and I know that one day I will be in heaven and I just hope that those of you who are listening that you will think about uh, God's uh, Jesus dying on the cross and he was resurrected and he is back in heaven and we believe in Jesus that Jesus Christ saved us from our sins uh, many many years ago I got to go to the Holy Lands uh, with the Bible Crystal Studies. Uh, it was an 18 day trip and my brother wanted my mother and me to go and so he, he paid our way to go. And we went and we saw all of these places where Jesus had, had walked on, on earth and we were in the Garden of Gethsemane and a lady sang the song uh, I walked today where Jesus walked and there were about 50 in this group uh, from most of them were First Baptist Dallas and there was not a dry eye when she she finished singing because we were right there we had seen uh, the places that Jesus had walked and I want to just say the words to the song that she sang it says I walked today where Jesus walked in days long ago I went down each path he knew with reverent step and, and slow. Those little lanes, they have, have not changed. There is sweet peace that fills the air. I walked today where Jesus walked and felt him close to me. This was back in 1979 back when I went uh, it was about three weeks before we moved back to to Corsicana and we we took many of the steps that Jesus took and that was a everlasting trip for for me uh, and I hear that they're trying to get another group together now to go to the Holy Lands and I hope some of our people will get to go and, and see just exactly where Jesus walked, uh, where his tomb was, uh, the areas that he walked. It was just uh, an amazing, amazing trip. And uh, I'll, I'll close with that. Let's, let's bow for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm just so thankful that you came into my heart and that I had leaders in this church that told me about you and a preacher that preached about Jesus coming into our lives. Father, I'm so thankful that I had good Sunday school leaders and training union teachers that told us that Jesus was the most important thing in our lives. Father, I hope that those 
of you that don't know Jesus that you will accept him as your Savior and and follow him and lead him and let him lead you in, in your path, in your daily path. Father, help us through this week as troubles may come, trials may come. Uh, we live in a difficult world, but we know that that one day we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful place to go as a, as a Christian. We know where we will be. We will hear the angels singing, and we'll get to be with Jesus again. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> we are so glad that... Uh, you, uh, I'm hoping a lot of you get to listen to this story that Miss Patty taught today. A great story and about stories, it is, like she said, stories we've heard a long time. But I wanted to remind you of a couple of, a couple of things. One is, you, I, I think you probably all know that Mike Flanagan here, here a few weeks ago passed away. And uh, Mike was, uh, used to be a real strong member of this class and, and came and just didn't miss. Uh, really and truly, and and uh, he, they waited a little bit to have his funeral. But uh, Miss Patty and Karen and I all went to, to that funeral, and we got a nice little card back from them, saying from his brother Tim, and uh, just telling us Tim and Teresa that uh, mm -hmm. that. Uh, how much they appreciated the fact that we were there and the fact that uh, that we sent the special ministries department sent some flowers so we're we want to we want you to keep praying for Tim and and his and that and that family that uh, as they as they are sorry and feel and feel lonely now without one of their family members the other thing I need to t talk to you about this morning is that David Zink David is really really sick and he, and uh, he is in rehab uh, place here in Corsicana, and so his and his mother is uh, his mother's taking it very very hard, and so I want you to pray pray about uh, his family, and uh, he has some aunts, and he has some he and his mother and the grandmother and all of those people that. Uh, or took care of him and, and watched over him. Of course, he's come to Sunday school and been a part of that. This place pretty well from from the, well, maybe not from the beginning since we've been here, but pretty close. Uh, so he, we want you to pray for him and pray for his family and uh, just take, pray that the Lord will take care of him and uh, and whatever happens will be because God wants it to happen. And, and if he decides to take him Take him home. He and Mike will have a good time, <laughs> yeah, along with some others that I know of that are there waiting, waiting, waiting on them to 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 make that entrance into heaven. So, well, wanted you to do that. Wanted you to pr want you to pray, and I just want you to pray that someday, pretty quick, everybody's gonna everybody's gonna be turned loose and uh, ready to come back to Sunday school, and we can have some good times in Sunday school like we've had like we've had always in our past. I know Brother Danny's anxious for you to be back in our in, in church and because you know how much he loves you. He, um, he asks about you all a lot of the time and so I, uh, I think it was one day this was it uh, Thursday I saw Betty. She holler, Betty hollered at me all the way across HEB just about so I heard somebody hollering Jerry Jerry and so Betty was. It was good to see her and talk to her. I hadn't talked to her since we'd been in this COVID. Uh, she has talked to some of the rest of everybody because they they shop over there. I think Miss Patty sees her pretty often um, uh, when she goes there, and some other other people, Chuck and Pam, see her see her occasionally. But uh, I do talk to uh, Johnny, and so. A lot of people were getting to talk to and see, but a lot of people were not getting to talk to him. We sure miss you in Sunday school and in church. So with that said, I took a long time to say that we miss you and we love you. And we want you to be back here real soon. But remember Mike's family and David's family. Thank you.